First of all, it is a disease which shows X-linked recessive inheritance. The question asked in one of the neat super speciality was, all of the following are true regarding Viscott Eldridge except there were four options given. The important one is Viscott Eldridge syndrome. Viscott Eldridge syndrome has been asked in all the three neat super specialty exams. It has been asked in 2018. 19 and 20 and there is no reason why 21 and 22 should be exempted other than that also viscot eldridge syndrome is asked in the it has been asked in the past in the central institute super specialty exams also it has even been asked in the medicine related parts of uh, the dm the cardiology dm neurology dm rheumatology entrance exams also so viscot eldridge syndrome first of all it is a disease which shows X-linked recessive inheritance. The question asked in one of the neat super speciality was all of the following are true regarding Viscott Eldridge except there were four options given. One of the option was X-linked dominant and that was the wrong answer. It is a X-linked recessive condition. You can put up star and write MCQ. The gene is present on short arm of chromosome XP11 and the gene local is 11.22 and 23. It codes for a, uh, the gene present. The name of the gene is VASP gene, which codes for a protein known as VASP protein. VASP is nothing but Viscott Aldrich syndrome protein. So, VASP protein, it normally binds to CDC42H2 and RAC proteins, which are GTPases. They are row type GTPases. Whenever this VASP gene binds to them, that it controls actin filament assembly and it is involved in signal transduction in the immune cells. So, imagine a scenario where VASP gene mutation happens. What will happen? It, the actin filament assembly will not happen, signal transduction in immune cells will not happen and it will lead to recurrent infections. That condition is known as viscot aldrich syndrome. The cells affected in viscot aldrich are not only the immune cells but also blood cells like platelets. So, the three lines of cells are predominantly affected. You have T lymphocytes getting affected, dendritic cells which are a kind of antigen presenting cells they are affected and the platelets are also affected. The clinical features, the clinical features are virtually always asked. There is a very classic triad we see in viscot aldrich syndrome. The triad comprises three things. What is the triad? First, there is a atopic dermatitis like rash or eczematous rash. So, eczema similar to what you see in atopic dermatitis that is present in the child. Second is recurrent infections, recurrent bacterial infections and viral infections are seen and they have thrombocytopenia with small platelets. So, the number is also low and size is also low producing bleeding manifestations. What kind of bleeding manifestations? I am not writing it here. Uh, all of you know already that whenever there are platelet disorders, there are superficial mucosal bleeds pet and petechiae purpurae chymosis which are more common. Whenever there are coagulopathy or coagulation related disorders, then muscular, joint, hemoarthrosis, those kind of deeper bleeds are there. So, patients with viscot aldrich syndrome, the question will say bruise epistaxis, recurrent bruising, petechiae, purpurae, non-blanching, superficial rash coming. So, all these terms will mean, they will indicate that the patient is having a superficial platelet related bleeding and along with eczema and recurrent infections, you would think of viscot Aldrich syndrome. Nelson 21st edition, there is a line mentioned. What is the line? The line is very important. It says, I am ri just writing on the side, that absence of thrombocytopenia Nelson says, absence of thrombocytopenia rules out Viscott Aldrich syndrome. So, a normal platelet count virtually rules out Viscott Aldrich syndrome as the initial diagnosis. See, when we talk about these generalizations, we are talking about the common pattern. You know that medicine, pediatrics, there can be exception to virtually everything. But uh, for entrance, we need to go by what standard books say. And so, absence of thrombocytopenia rules out Viscott-Aldrich syndrome. And this is the photograph. Uh, 
which similar photograph was shown in not super speciality but neat pg exam it can be asked in super speciality exam also so the child is having a rash like this with recurrent infections and low platelet count what, what what is the diagnosis that is how a visual a clinical mcq integrated mcq was asked moving from this to the investigations first of all you should know that small platelets are there the size is less number is less and the peripheral smear will show small sized less platelets as you can see in this picture there is a labeled uh, normal size platelet here and there is a very small platelet compared to this so you have small size platelets which are sparse they have low igm levels mcq point they have low igm levels however iga and ige is elevated raised ige in part explains the occurrence of rash in these children normal to slightly low igg levels are there t cells are mild to moderately decreased it is not a very severe form and mcq point asked in pgi super speciality a few years back there is poor humoral response to polysaccharide antigens so poor humoral response that is when you give polysaccharide antigens come the antibody production against them is not good coming to complications there is increased risk of autoimmune diseases due to defective t regulatory cells for example cytopenias now you know that uh, whenever there is in wiskott aldrich syndrome there is deficiency of t lymphocytes t lymphocytes are not only involved in the normal uh, immune mechanism uh, direct toxicity and stimulating b cells to produce antibody the regulatory t cells also destroy the auto reactive t cells and the auto reactive immune phenomena so when you have deficiency of regulatory cells what will happen the auto immune phenomena will become active and what will happen the patient will have a high risk of developing cytopenias particularly the child will have high risk of auto immune hemolytic anemia auto immune hemolytic anemia is common you can sometimes find immune thrombocytopenia immune neutropenia also but high risk of aiha is found in them also there is increased risk of viral induced lymphomas which is the common virus which has a high tendency to induce lymphoma yes you are right it is epstein barr virus so epstein barr virus related lymphomas are commonly seen in children with wiskott aldrich syndrome and the therapy the treatment of therapy is hematopoietic stem cell transplant hsct is the therapy of choice